Who you know who does it better than this? I'm the boy you done did it. I'm on top of the list. Trying to get a good signal like a satellite dish. Every day to me. It's like a solar eclipse. Uh -uh. What's up, y'all? South African Geek here. Welcome to my channel. About to do something I haven't done in this channel yet. Is watch another YouTube channel. It's content. But this is no ordinary YouTube channel. This is Cordio Crew. They do some dope ass Olympics like Terminator Olympics. I think they did a Will Smith Olympics once. Um, they do stuff like that. They do a lot of VFX work, a lot of great stuff. They're a great production company. And I'm excited. They do this dope series called Animator Reacts, Stuntman Reacts, VFX Reacts to Bad Good. I mean, like, I'm excited. I normally watch this on my own, but I thought, you know what? Let me just watch it with people since a lot of people seems to seem to be chill. Tuning in to them doing their stuff. So I'm excited to dive right in. This is the second one. I think I watched this, the first one a while ago. So I'm excited. It's not wasting any more time. I just dive right in. This is Animators Reacts to Bad and Grey Cartoons 2. I can't imagine having a film broken out by frames. They took advantage of the entire media. Every single one of his movies is a masterpiece. So you're saying that this is effects animation? They're gonna dive deep Today's into this. Today's episode is brought to you by DraftKings. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Animators React. We are joined today by Eric Koenig, who has worked on a bunch of stuff from The Simpsons, some classic Warner Brothers films. He's incredibly and special talented, guest been in the industry for a long time, and has some awesome insights to share with us on animation. What is your job specifically? So I am in charge of special projects, things like commercials or promos. We've done Trump cartoons over the last few years. You guys probably don't use like pen and paper much anymore, do you? Is it mostly like tablets and... So when I first started, I still did the paper animation with the pegs on it. And then it was around that cool. time that we switched over to the Wacom tablets and you draw right directly onto the screen. I use it for editing, it's the, it's the best. Yeah. There's so much stuff to pick apart, so let's jump right in. We'll kick things off here with Fantasia. Let's talk about the idea of animation as art. That was the idea behind Fantasia, was that it incorporates music and dance and theater and filmmaking and color and painting all into these films. And what Walt Disney was trying to do was go, we're making an art piece. You know, I love Fantasia, but I also think he got a little wrapped up in his pretentiousness with <laughs> Fantasia. There's some sequences like Night on Ball Mountain, which I just love, and it scared the bejesus out of me when I was a kid. And then there's other sequences that tiptoe on the boring side. It was a lesson for Walt that he primarily is an entertainer, that he has a duty to the audience to keep them entertained. Fantasia has a mastery of effects animation. There's a beautiful sequence with the petal drops in the water. So you're saying that this is effects animation? There's kind of two animators that get employed at a studio. There's the character animators and the effects animators. Characters are they didn't know characters. That. The effects animators are water, fire, in this case, petal droplets. It is its own mastery. These people are geniuses. The good effects animator also, it's a mixture of being well observed, looking at realistic things like bubbles here in this case. Then you have to take those effects and you have to make them work in the world that you're creating. So if it's Fantasia, there's a style of the effects that works for the sequence. If it's a movie like Prince of Egypt, there's an Egyptian flair to those effects. I remember seeing tests on a movie I worked on called The Road to El Dorado and they would incorporate Mayan designs into the fire. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and you the know, details I can't say the are of these crazy, guys. though. Know. Spirited away. I've watched this movie so many times, but there's still so people recommend to watch it. Discussion about animation <laughs> would be completely That's how big this movie is. Izaki, a true genius, master draftsman, and a master storyteller. You know, he storyboards all of his own films, so these are, we're looking at actual, his drawings, and the thing that's fun to look at, they're loose. 
but everything is there. The weight, the storytelling, the caricature, every drawing that he does has that in it. My first film I saw of Miyazaki's was uh, Naushika of the Valley of the Wind. I was so amazed by the storytelling and the design of all the creatures. The big change that kind of came along with him was incorporating modern cinema into animation. So you have camera moves, camera pans, 360 spins, all the things that a live action filmmaker will use he was using in his animation. The difference between Fantasia and Spirited Away He's one from of the details he's sharing is interesting. Creators of entertainment and media of, of all time. You know, every single one of his movies is, is a masterpiece. I love how you combine it with American cinema. You certainly have the American storytelling, but at the same time, he's not afraid to slow down and like show things that are just kind of boring and mundane. There's that beautiful scene on the train when they're leaving the bathhouse and they're just oh, sitting on that train the and, you know, right and the whole oh. movie just stops and takes a deep sigh. They're <laughs> making it super dramatic. <laughs> Well, you know, I, you, know you, you cry. It's, a, it's just gorgeous. Would you say this is a mix of space and reality versus goofy and cartoony? It's a beautiful mix of both. All of his stuff has a caricature to it. They're grounded in realism, but then he caricatures the faces and the expressions. His characters are just the best. Yeah. Everyone is so well-rounded and everyone has heart and everyone has like a purpose. And you love every character throughout the entire process. You learn to love everybody. Hey, if Eric is cool enough to subscribe to us, you can be that cool too. Consider subscribing Already to the am. Crew. Now let's take a look at something that you worked on. Cats Don't Dance. I was right out of Cal Arts, right it. out of college when I got the chance to work on this movie. It was really made with a tiny crew with a real shoestring budget. The fun part of it was, was that there were only maybe 20 to 25 animators as opposed to the normal 60 that's on a Disney movie. And so we were all given a lot of responsibility, too much responsibility at an early age, got a little cocky, you know, <laughs> and later on in my career, I had to take a step back. I got rhythm. In my feet, I got rhythm in my heart and soul. What specifically were you doing here for this piece? So I am animating the elephant. There's a goat and a fish. And this is a scene I animated actually to see how to much CG like animation with hand-drawn animation here, which is pretty how they early delicate at that time, responsibility. The CG. So you mentioned that there is a CG piano, a very well animated piano where the perspective shifts. It's super smooth. It's mathematically precise. So that's you know it's a three D model. This movie came out in nineteen ninety six, so that's pretty early. Was having CG like cell shaded CG. Was that prevalent before this, or is this one of those first times? It had to be 10 years before. Tron is the big milestone in CG animation. By the time we're getting there, CG animation is actually used a lot more. At the time, what we used it for were inanimate objects, like cars, or in this case, is a piano, that would be nearly impossible to draw by hand, because you'd have to try and draw all of that perspective shift. The thing that strikes me about this piano sequence is I see this a lot in Futurama, like the ships and like the the other objects that are inanimate that aren't moving, they'll be a 3D model that looks CG. And it seems like it's a smart use of your time and effort because the piano is just the piano. It doesn't stretch, doesn't squash, it's not doing anything. It just has to move because the camera's moving. So by making that a 3D object, you're saving yourself the hassle of just kind of doing grunt work of a shifting perspective and you're putting all of your attention and energy into a character instead. They really make you focus on now, the how little line details. Up to the music? With a musical, the musical numbers are usually always some of the first things that are written in an animated film because you have to animate to the music. On the X sheet are little X's that mark the beats hmm. of the oh, music. Okay, okay. So I know on frame 16, down. And then on frame 18 or whatever, it's up. And Crazy. then I have a recording of, in the old days, it was a tape recording, you know, and I had a tape deck by my side. <laughs> if you look at like really old footage of the Disney animators, they had record players, wow. <laughs> which was nuts, and they would like play the piece of music over and over. Man. And uh, then you film your animation, and then you would bring in your bit of music, 
and then you'd play back the animation for the director and you'd get to watch the animation. All of that is a thousand times easier now because <laughs> you have one program. That's crazy. Like, you know, we'll work on a project, you know, like, okay, we have 40 effect shots. And you break down our spreadsheet and it's like, 40 shots, that's a lot. I can't imagine having a film broken out by frames. For every second, there's 24 things you gotta deal with. And then that goes on for however many minutes of film you have. When I was at CalArts, this short had come out called Family Dog, and it just rocked my socks. And it turned out it was directed by a young guy named Brad Bird, who went to CalArts and later on went on to do little movies called Incredibles and Ratatouille. <laughs> he loved yeah. looking at life. And you want to incorporate as much of your observation from real life into your animation because when you have that kind of observation, it grounds the animation and makes them relatable. You're looking for something unusual. This also goes into live action. You know, the most memorable live action performances you can think of, it's not them doing a robotic or simple action. It's always that weird little thing that they add in that, and it makes a moment memorable. And so when you have an animated scene and the character does something in a memorable, odd way, it just comes to life. If you guys have other animations that you'd love to have us showcase here on the show, please leave a comment down below. It's great inspiration. And uh, we'll see if we can keep doing some more of these. It's a really fun little twist in the formula. Guys, we've talked about a lot of stuff today. So let's combine all those things together and talk about one of my favorite movies, Spider-Verse. The Goat. What's up, danger? What's when I first up, got into animation, I would see something that would really inspire me, and I would leave the theater shaking. And you know, as I've gotten older, maybe a little more jaded, I'd kind of lost a little bit of that rawness. And then I went and saw this movie and got it again. The detail that they was in this took movie. Advantage of the entire medium. There's elements of. 2D animation, 3D animation, cinematic staging, comic book staging. They did it all. They told a beautiful story. This sequence is quite famous. Miles is moving on twos because he's awkward, he's inexperienced, whereas Peter Parker is moving on ones because he can control it, he's smooth. So film runs at 24 frames a second. In animation, you normally can animate things on twos. So any of the classic Disney movies to Scooby-Doo or whatever is generally animated on two because you really can do 12 drawings a second. On rare occasions, they like to animate things on ones. So as Miles gains control of his skills, he starts to move on ones. There you go. They're now together. he's work, working on ones and he's gaining the smoothness. It was an insider animation the trick detail, that made man. you feel the weight of it. The other thing I would talk about is just the posing of this movie. They're using the John Kirby posing. You know, he used force perspective to give motion in his comic books because, you know, he only had still drawings. But here they have the animation, but they're incorporating that really dynamic posing to remind you that this is a comic book. The other uh, element to talk about is the hand-drawn elements over the characters. They did the CG, then the scene was brought into a hand-drawn animation program, and he or she is going in and drawing the little nose lines and all of that frame by frame frame, so it's combining the 2D and the 3D to really, like I said, take full advantage of the medium. Yeah, the style is just so cool and feels so fresh. They're doing a second one, aren't they? They are. They're working oh. on it right now, as I, I understand. Hey everyone, it's time in the video where I tell you about today's sponsor, DraftKings. Now, I know DraftKings is about sports, and that doesn't have anything to do with Animators React, but hey, whatever, the playoffs are coming up in October, and football is starting September 10th, so I gotta call the guys and let them know everything that DraftKings has to offer for sports this September. Let's go. Hey, Nico, did you know that DraftKings is back for this September with the return of football? And and they've got a whole bunch of prizes for sports fans. More things. <laughs> like, did you, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with the Bucks this year. I mean, they got Brady and Gronk. What do you think about that? I mean, as long as they throw the ball long and make a good effort to run the ball to, like, to, the, to the goals, I think they all they got what it takes, you know? It really just comes down to that these boys uh, can put the mind where the ball is. It's very inspirational. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Nick. Guess what? Still dad. What? 
What, what, what's going on, man? DraftKings is giving away up to $100 million in total prizes to people this year with one lucky winner who is going to walk away with a million dollars. Did you know that? Wait, sports is back? Hey, Ren, there's all these things you can do in the lobby, create your own drafts, you can create your own teams, you can create your own rosters. I like basketball. It's my like favorite sport. Where can I access all this information? So DraftKings, it's free to sign up for new users. You can just click the link in the description below, or you can go to DraftKings.com and use the code Corridor Crew to sign up. What's up, son? Clinton Jones. Huh? DraftKings.com, use promo code Coral Crew. I gotta go. <laughs> what is going on, dude? So, perfect. I I've let all the guys know we're gonna take our shot. Anyway, if you guys are interested, head on over to DraftKings.com. Use the promo code Coral Crew. It actually is the best way to engage in sports uh, beyond just watching. See you guys out there. Hey, if you guys enjoyed hearing about animation on today's episode, then go ahead and subscribe because we've got more yeah. coming. We also have the VFX Artist React series and the Stuntman React series. So we got a whole lot of educational stuff for you guys. So subscribe. Well, that was really cool. It's It's been really neat to have some insight on an art form that's been really important to my life, really important to your life, and obviously important to your life as well. We'll put a link down in the description below to Eric's channel if you want to go check it out. And thank you so much for, for actually for giving us the idea for out. this show. <laughs> thank you so much. It's really yeah, cool thanks, to Eric. take that initiative. Yeah, and thank you guys. You know, I love, love your series. It's really fun to watch, really inspiring. Big thank you to you guys as well. So. Cool, man. Well, th I really appreciate that. Big thanks all around. And thank you to you guys for watching and hope to see you in the next one. It was madly entertaining, so tell me what you guys think. Are you guys excited about the medium of animation after watching this with me? I'm madly excited. The storytelling element mixing film and animation to tell dynamic stories. Like with Spirited Away especially, with that scene they stayed in, the pacing was phenomenal with the score seeing it, seeing it in animation style but also seeing like a film element to it it's kind of daunting and amazing i feel like we madly spoil these days with the entertainment we get like appreciating the, the finer details is kind of an amazing thing anyways subscribe if you haven't subscribed hit that post notification bell deuces